Well, good morning. Praise be to God. Praise be to the name of the Father. Glory to the Father. Glory, 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 glory. Let's go before our Father this morning. Father God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for your love, your compassion. We thank you, Father God, for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. Father God, we invite you here. There is no church service without you. We need your presence. We need your word. We need your spirit, oh Father God. We need your correction. We need your love. We also need your chastisement, Father God. We thank you and we appreciate you, Father God, for, for giving us your grace to showing us a better way, showing us a more pure way, <clears throat> Father God, than the world's way. We realize, Father God, that we can't do this thing without you. And without you, there is no us. So continue to help us, O oh Lord. Continue to show your everlasting mercy and grace upon our lives. And help us turn our hearts, Father God, more and more to you. We love you and we appreciate you because you're so good. We can't get over how good you are. <clears throat> and Father God, if we take this new adventure to your word, we know, Father God, that you are going to make an impartation into our hearts that can never be changed, that can never be erased. We thank you, Father God. We love you and we appreciate you for that. Now, Father God, I submit myself to your spirit, soul, and body. Use my mind, use my heart, use my mouth, please, to minister your word to your people this day. And we covenant with you right now, Father God, to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory for every victory that will come out of today's session. We thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen, and thanks be to God. Turn your Bible to the book of uh, 2 Corinthians. I'm, not, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We're going to go back and read our uh, foundational scripture. We haven't really read it in a while. We haven't really read it in a while because, you know, it's just because. <laughs> no real reason why. Okay. Our foundational scripture. Now, I do understand <clears throat> that this one scripture cannot stand alone. Have y'all ever been listening to certain preachers or certain people that just try to use a scripture and they, they completely take it way, way out of context? There's a lot of scriptures that can stand alone. Like a, a lot of the book of Proverbs, if you take one, one scripture in the book of Proverbs, uh, some of them, not all of them, but some of them, that one scripture can stand alone because the book of Proverbs, it, it is what, it's what you would call the wisdom book. And if you take that one proverb, it's like one quick saying. Um, you know, um, what, what? Okay, thank you, Holy Spirit. I don't know if it's a good example. Maybe it's comedy going on right now. Uh, remember when your parents used to say, but well, hard head make a soft? Yeah, <laughs> you know, that one, you you, you like, uh huh, what? <laughs> now, hard head make a, we, we say, now, hard head make a soft rear end, but that's not what the old for you is saying. Oh, he made a soft. You know what I'm talking about. That one statement, if you listen to it, it can stand alone and it'll give you, it'll feed you a whole lot of wisdom. <laughs> and that's the way the book of Proverbs is. But a lot of scriptures can't stand alone. And I heard somebody make a statement yesterday, and I, it almost <laughs> made my flesh cream. They said, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. And I said, oh, goodness gracious. I didn't say nothing, I just let them be. <laughs> I let them be to the Lord. The Lord don't give it, and the Lord don't take it away. Under the old covenant, He did. He gave, and then He took a lot of it away, especially. But if you go read throughout the storylines, uh, you know, the Kings and the Chronicles. Now, same like I'm just rambling, but I'm gonna get to the point here in a second. If you go to through the Book of Kings and the Book of uh, the Chronicles, where you read about <laughs> King Solomon, King David, King Saul. And all of the stuff that was going on, because that's why I've been at this past week, you'll pick up where God showed them mercy every which way. And and it was almost like some of them, only only a few, King Solomon and King David, they figured it out. Like this is God showing us mercy. You know, the Bible says that um, 
the, all the, the wicked was coming against them, and God delivered them out of all their troubles. All their troubles. So, there were some things going on that they <laughs> saw in the natural, and they couldn't understand, like, why is this going on? Why is this going on? There are some things going on behind the scenes. That's why we get into first chapter 12, verse 1. It says, now concerning spiritual gifts. Brethren, I would not have you ignorant concerning spiritual gifts. Concerning spiritual gifts. These are gifts. The word gifts is it, something that you can use. That's what the word gift is replying to here. We've already, we've already went over this. This rehearsal. Just rehearsal what we already rehearsed. <laughs> there, there are some things that God gives you, gives us, so that we can operate in the spirit. While we right here, smack dab in the middle of three-dimensional planet Earth. <laughs> four-dimensional or whatever you want. What will be four-dimensional? Like another, another round? <coughs> All these science geeks out there. <laughs> So but we live in a three-dimensional world, you know, when you can, the five senses going to work. Smell, taste, touch, hear, and what was the other one? Uh, sight. <coughs> sight. Oh, well, you can sign, see. <laughs> All the five senses go into play. Uh, you, 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 that's what we live at right now. But God has given us his word so that we can operate. He's a spirit. And we can operate while we're right here. Right here on planet Earth in its three-dimensional world. Operate in the spirit. Just like God is operating in the spirit in the spiritual realm. I'm going to say that again because some of y'all are hearing me and then you're not hearing me. You just, you, 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 your mind is going religious on it. Stop it. <laughs> God gave us his word, which is spirit, and he, since he gave us his word, he wants us to be able to operate in the spirit realm, even though we're right here in this three-dimensional world. And the only way you can operate in the spiritual realm is if you operate in God's word. But it's a whole lot of stuff going on out there in the spiritual realm. Satan's out there. Demonic spirits are out there. Hell is out there. I, one last time, y'all, you might say, Pastor, you know, I went to hell the other day. <laughs> I'm going through hell right now. I, I, it would be nice if you can go over there and open up a door like, oh, that's hell right there. No, I'm going to shut that door. I ain't going there, right? You know, you can't do that. Hell is a spiritual place. Hell, it's a spiritual place. I mean, I, I'm not going there. Well, I mean, some of y'all may not notice, you don't get to see it, but you'll never go. Glory to God. It? Just like Jesus, the Bible says that Jesus went into the inner parts of the earth. Jesus went to hell, but hell couldn't hold him. He, it, it didn't affect him. He was just there. And just, you know, really, really think about it. You can't really escape God. He's going to be there. He's there now. But he's, it's not to touch him because he, he does, can't hold on to him. You can't go nowhere where the Spirit of God is not. He's everywhere. He's, every, he's everywhere. I already got my I'll get some of that. Feed me right there. But anyway, you know, now concerning spiritual gifts, because I can ramble on right there with that. Spiritual gifts, brother, God says, I don't want you to be what? Ignorant. That ignorant means you do not know. God wants you to be in the know. <sighs> With that being said, fast forward, because we way, way down to this now. Way, way down to this now. We have found out that in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, those gifts, those gifts, let me go back over there again. <laughs> those gifts that God has given us, <clears throat> excuse me, ah, back, back, back. These gifts, <laughs> these gifts are the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. But then we find out in Romans chapter 12 that those gifts, that those gifts 
are gifts that God gave to us. God gave to us. You'll see them in your everyday walk. And you operate them. Um, also in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, we find out about the fivefold ministry gifts. The fivefold ministry gifts. Those gifts are the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher. What are those gifts for? For the edifying of the body of Christ. We've been going really, really extensively into that area because those gifts that God gave us, those five, those, te those gifts, they are in men. Today we're going to briefly talk about, today we're going to briefly talk about using those specific gifts for our, because those, we should see them as our leaders. Think about it. Where we at right now? We got so many people on TV, and just because they've earned, or they've created, or they've made a whole lot of money, we think we should listen to them. And then when you really get to talking to them, it's not the same. Please, please hear me very carefully. And I'm not here, we're not here today to judge anybody. We're not here today to judge anybody. And I like, I like to use now, me and my wife as a great example. Uh, I mean, li literally, we've been married almost 20 years now. <coughs> right now. Love you much. And, I, and I love my wife. I'm not going anywhere but to the house. And I, I, I go out my way for her. And I know that she goes out her way for me. We, we cover each other's backs. Whether, it's almost like you know the individual have flaws and faults, but it's you don't even see them anymore. I mean, you can go nitpick and go find a flaw. You know, who, who your breath stank today? Well, your breath stank yesterday. Okay, okay. Uh, or, or, you know, why you got this extra wrinkle in, in your head? Well, because, look, look, right there, arm wrinkle right there. And we know, so what? <laughs> and you got, I'm pretty sure you got an extra wrinkle somewhere, too, that I bought it on, so that you're trying to cover up. <laughs> well, you see that the marriage is doing real well. People see that. That I get asked all the time. I, I, my wife tells me. People ask her all the time. When's the last time you all argued? For what? What's the point of arguing for? I mean, we have disagreements. Don't get me wrong. We got some things on the table right now that we're trying to discuss. I'm not going to want to improve and give you knowledge to it. But what's the point of arguing about it? We in this thing together. We in this thing together. So why argue? You might not be able to come up with the, I, I wish, when she asked me the question, well, what do you want to do? I wish I could come up with an answer, like, right away, here's the answer. But I'm not like that, or vice versa. I'll bring something up to her, and I wish she would give me an answer, like, no, give me an answer now! You know, you see that, you, this is the Lifetime movie networks and stuff like movies, and, you know, they, they almost force them to give them an answer. They ain't got it. They don't know it. Why don't you know it? Well, I just don't know it. I mean, you gonna beat me up? What? Ah, ah, I'm tired. Nah. All men are just like all women are just like no, really? I mean, why? We in this thing together through sickness and health, richer or poor, till death do us part. To love, to cherish, and to obey. That goes vice versa. <clears throat> my wife, my wife tells she said, "No, you obey me." <laughs> no. We in this thing together, so why in the world are we going to beat each other up? There are some other spiritual things going on that we may not see, and the more and more we submit ourselves to God's word, we will be able to overcome those things together. So, with that being said, we got leaders out there <clears throat> who can't figure nothing out. They can't figure nothing out. And then they get more and more, they, they get more and more in trouble. And then they call it got so much stuff going on. They can't they can't stay faithful to their spouse. They can't stay faithful to a job. They can't stay faithful to such such such. They they, they quit at every turn. And then because they produced a lot of money or they got some fame and fortune, oh yeah, listen to that person. I'm not listening to that person. That person been divorced five times. Well, they got $20 million in the bank. They got more money than you. I ain't listening to them. I ain't 
spit it in them. They've been divorced seven times. Well, you know, ain't nobody perfect. You ain't perfect, but why would I listen to them? Why would I listen to them? They should be listening to me. Or they should be listening to my wife. Or they, you know, I'm using us as the example. I mean, my pastor, they've been, him and his wife, Miss Addie, Pastor Holloway, they've been married over 40 years. I want to get there. I mean, these only, we've only knocked off 20 years. I want to be able to look at, look 20 years from now and be like, hey, baby girl, hey, Denise. Look, look at her. She got more, more wrinkles in her face, and I'm going to have more wrinkles in my face. And I'm like, more gray. And I, I notice it right here. It's almost like all gray now. It's, it's, it's close. I want to, in 20 years, I want to be like, yeah, she's been the one right here with me, and he's been the one right here with me. We got leaders who are not operating in these spiritual gifts. Oh, goodness gracious. Hold your finger there. <clears throat> Hold your finger there. Go over to the book of Timothy. Yeah. <clears> Hold <throat> to the book of Timothy. Timothy. Out. How about you put a glass on? Then you'll better see. Second Timothy, that is. Mm -hmm. Give me, mm -hmm. You wanna come up here and do you know where I'm going? <laughs> I love when people mm -hmm. like 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 they know they've been studying my message all week long, right along with me. They know he's scripture. Now sometimes it'll be like that though, when you when you when you sit down in front of the pastor and you go to church. And you've been studying the word too. And all I'm like, I was just reading that the other day. It's like the him, this preacher, and that preacher, and that preacher, they were teaching on the same thing. Well, sometimes when you study the word of God, 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 I've noticed this. God doesn't just give one specific message. He does in some cases, don't get me wrong, uh, to, for, for, the, for men and women of God to teach certain things. And But at, so, every so often, the Spirit of God will align himself. Well, he's already aligned with him. He'll align other men and women of God up unto him to get out the same message mm -hmm. in, at, eight, at eight different areas. Uh, like uh, years ago, there was, this, there was this man over there well, when really, really preachers, <clears throat> preachers have all, always done it, but now because we understand more and more about grace, preachers are able to come back and teach on or teach against homosexuality, lesbian, and, and bisexualism, and, and whatever, and you know, transgenders, and yada, and you know the LBGT community, community, blah, 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 blah. They're able to come back and teach on those things to those, to those people who, are, who have gone down those roads to help deliver them. And it's not coming with a turn or burn no, you're going to hell. No, you know, I hate reading these stupid signs. God hates lesbians. God hates gays. Are you kidding me? It's Jesus died on the cross for them. They need to be delivered. But now you got more and more preachers coming back <clears throat> preaching us these certain things. And with the, through grace and say, hey, God can deliver you. God's here to help you. He wants to help you. God loves you too. God loves you too. But Man of God, he was preaching and he had never taught on it. And all of a sudden, when the when the teaching started going forth about grace and about being delivered, he didn't know he had homosexual lesbians in his congregation. You know, people just don't take everything. And some of them get mad. Who you think you were teaching against that stuff? And if you can't, they try to say it was a hate crime. And it wasn't a hate crime because they say you know you 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 offended us and you know try to take them to jail. And they put the man in jail for thirty days. And Jay Sekulow went out there and got that man out of, no, no, no. This is his right, yada, 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 yada. And they said, had to drop the charges and got him out of there. Praise God. Why? Because the word of God is still here. Now, why am I showing, why am I saying that? <clears throat> Excuse me. Watch this. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Chapter 2. Look at verse 8. Look what it says, verse 8. Remember that Jesus Christ, the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to what? My gospel. Now, I want y'all to catch that again. No, look what he said. He says, remember that Jesus Christ, it's two things going on now. First, Paul, 
he's writing this to Timothy. Timothy is a, 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 a younger man who's up under the, the, the tutorship, that's my word, <laughs> of Paul. Younger, older. Sometimes, it, the, sometimes the thing can be flip flop. God used me a bunch of years ago to minister. Oh, here I am, this little young 27, 28 year old man. He used me to minister to an 81 year old man. Some of y'all may have heard the story already. He was 81. I led him to Jesus Christ, and he got baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And God flip flopped it. This man, and I should be listening to him. But he, God used me to minister to this man to get born again, to get baptized. And the man just, he, he said, he started crying. He said, I never knew. Think about it. You go 81 years and you never knew about the Holy Spirit. You never knew about Jesus. That's just, that's a, that's a long time. But in this case, Paul being the older, Timothy being the younger, leader. Paul says, remember that Jesus Christ the seed of David was raised from the dead. He's he put Timothy in remembrance of the of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But then look how look what look what God does. Look what God does. He allows Paul to say, according to my gospel. Notice it's not just the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the gospel. That he's taken for himself. How many of y'all ever heard me make this statement? I am so glad I got rid of my worldview. I, I, I don't have a worldview anymore. My view is what the Bible says. Well, this is what Paul has done. Paul completely got rid of his way of thinking. And he said, if you read another scripture, he says, Now I have gained the mind of Christ. So now, let, let's read on. What he, what he say? He says, wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Notice how he's going right back and he's using the word of God. Some of us are leaders. They may have, they may not be perfect, just like Paul wasn't perfect. Paul was a Paul was perfect in Christ. But if you go back, actually, Paul, if you can't even say Paul, perfect in Christ. Um, uh, if you, uh, I'm just kind of like just feeding you some stuff. Paul was Saul. Saul persecuted the church, had people killed, just like, just like the God Father. Kill him. You no, know, they followed that Jesus, kill him. When Jesus delivered him, when he delivered him, Paul got in trouble. Paul wasn't supposed to go to Rome. And the Holy Spirit said, Paul, do not go. He said, he said a prophet told him, man. Tied his hands up and ball with his own belt. He said, you go to Rome, this way you're going to go, in jail. They're going to lock your butt up. And Paul says, why are you meaning to hurt my feelings? I'm not only ready to go, but I'm also ready to die. The Bible says, God, it ceased to be God's will. He said, okay, well, you're going to go, and you're going to go in your own will. Paul ended up in trouble. So leaders will make mistakes, but Paul recognized that he made a mistake. Got in jail, and God had to literally give him joy for the, for the next big chunk of his life. That's where he stayed, right in jail. A lot of the letters that you read, like this letter right here, Paul wrote this letter right here when he was <laughs> locked up in prison. Locked up in prison. Why he get locked up in prison? Trying to tell people about Jesus and about the love and joy. So now, just like that preacher that taught, that taught locked up in prison. They're trying to take our rights away from us now from saying certain things because they don't want this truth to get out. So, now you got this right here. Paul saying, well, what did he say? <laughs> he said, wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer. He said, I'm going to go through stuff. Nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. But he said, I said, even unto bonds, which means I'm locked up in jail, but the word of God is not bound. The word of God is not bound. That should be the trademark of one of our leaders. <clears throat> Allowing the word of God to be have free course in their life. I'm going to say that again because some of y'all did y'all heard and you didn't hear it. 
Some of y'all are going to catch this back on, on replay when you go back to YouTube and look at all of the stuff. But the word of God needs to have free course. It needs to have free course. Why? Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Eternal glory. Some of our leaders don't. I'm going to say that. They, they own a job. And they get mad at what one or two people do. And then all of a sudden, they quit the job. And they say, well, they weren't, act, they weren't acting right there. <laughs> For years, I used to wonder how. And it would, I guess it would have been kind of tough for me. And I, I, I go back and look at that like during slavery days when when uh, black folk was getting treated wrong. And I'm going to say a few choice words here, so, but, you know, don't think nothing crazy about it. Just just, 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 a, just, just carry the thought. Just go with it. Go, go, go with it for a second. Nothing trying to offend anybody. I don't want to offend anybody. I remember it all. But when they was calling, you know, Caucasian people at that time was calling people nigga. And, you know, they was using it as in a degrading manner. I used to want to just want to fight folk. But then the sad thing about it is black folk turn right around and start calling each other, you know, Nigers. And then we say it's a term of endearment. The mm -hmm. definition, did the definition change? Show, show it to me. Well, you know, I know in the bondage dictionary, because there is one now, if you was to look up that word, uh, N-I-G-G-A-R, <laughs> they try to even change the spelling of it. They try to come up with a different definition of it. Still means the same to me. I had now, now that I really, really understand it. I would have got to fighting a whole bunch of stuff. But if somebody calls you something, is that who you are? When you begin to know who you are in Christ Jesus, they can call you whatever. I've been called colored. I've been called coon. And I've been I've been called porch monkey. And I'm thinking in my head like, oh, okay, well. I know who I am in Christ. I mean, those words really don't offend me anymore because I know who I am in Christ. And I'm not going to get mad. What's the point of getting mad about it for? Now, if you're trying to defend him, hey, don't, don't. Do not call him that. That's not who he is. That's not who he is. Who is he? I'm not going to try to bush inside your head because you call, it, you call my son that or call my daughters that or whatever or call my grandchildren that. Call them uh, Niger lovers. Guess what? They, they, they need to know who they are, and I'm going to defend them, but that's not who they are. Going back to this, what did Paul say? Therefore, I endure what? All things. I just talked about one of those things that people need to endure. When you begin to know who you are, it, it doesn't phase you none about what people say to you. I'm going to say it again. When you begin to know who you are, it won't matter what people say. And we need to see that in our leaders. Husband and wife now. If she's calling me out of my name, and I, 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 she calls she called me Bear, Bear, uh, and called me, uh, you know, Hulk, you know, but it's, it's almost cool. It's because it's like, ah, oh, it's strong, it's strength. I, when my wife, I grab her or something, she's like, oh, it's just so strong. And I'm like, well, at least you know a man grab me. And I know also that nowadays, some of you women nowadays, y'all got that same strength. My sister-in-law get them massaging their neck and that baby like, man, your hair's so strong. <laughs> Go ahead. <here. laughs> well, praise God. Anyway, I just had a crappy joke there. But you begin, when you know who you are, if they talk about each other, you talk about each other within that and trying to get things done, you won't be too quick to run off. I, I hear about marriages when well, we got married. Now we're finna get divorced. Well, how long y'all were married? Six weeks. Six weeks! <laughs> but I just can't get along with her. Well, y'all was getting along fine before? So what happened in six weeks? I mean, honestly, what happened? Oh my goodness. Our leaders, our leaders, we need to see our leaders operating in these things. And this is what Paul saw. Only Timothy had to see. <clears throat> Look what it says. 
He says, I, I, <coughs> sorry. Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Notice how about, look at the scripture. Some of y'all gazing off in the thin air somewhere. Look, you're not, you're not focused. I don't know why I had to do that. Some of you to stay focused over here. Look, he says, obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Notice it's not talking about just getting born again and keep you from going to hell. That's why he said with eternal glory. That's the part. That's the part that when you die, you're going to go to heaven. But he says the salvation, it is saving, saving knowing that you can walk free in this world. Some of us don't know how to walk free. We still, we don't, we have not got hold of that yet. We free, we still in bondage to people's attitudes. We in bondage to what people say about us. We in bondage to different, uh, different situations, such as drugs, alcohol, sex. We addicted to our own uh, personal opinions. Y'all know like you talk to certain, uh, certain old folk, or even certain young folk nowadays, they just set in their ways and they ain't going to be moved. And then they try to say, well, I'm a Pisces, or I'm a Aquarius, or I'm a this, and this is who we are. No, that's what you say, they, that's what the world say who you are. I'm a Christian. I, what month is you born in? And then when they ask me that, I already know where they're going. I was born in the month of February. Oh, so you're an Aquarius. You know, Aquarius is this. No, I ain't that. I'm what the word say I am. Wait, 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 you, 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 you know what I mean. No, 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 I'm not that. That's not who I am. I'm what the word say I am. I'm what the word say I am. What are the words? What, who are the words say I am? Saved. Saved. Sanctified. Holy. I'm righteous. I'm perfect in the eyes of God. That's who I am. I'm delivered. I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. I have been bought with a price. I've been bought. Jesus Christ bought me. Yes, he, the Bible says he, he bought us with his own blood. The sin debt had to be paid. And he paid it. Which means he bought my salvation. Look, look, come on, let, let, let's read on. He says, he says, verse 11, it is, it is a faithful saying, for if we be dead, if we be, if we be, huh? now y'all have me say we be, I got it from the Bible. If we be dead with him, we shall also what? Live with him. If we, if we suffer, uh, oh goodness, if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. That is the only way that you can lose your salvation is if you deny him. That's the only way. Now, it's tough to deny Jesus. It's tough, man. It's so, and once you really start tasting and seeing that God is good, people say, once saved, always saved. That is true, but at the same time, it's not true. Because if you ever get to the point to where you deny Jesus, say, Jesus, blankety blank you. I deny you. I don't want to have nothing to do with you no more. I don't believe that you really died on the cross. I don't really believe that you raised from the dead. And you say that and you mean all of that kind of stuff. You open yourself up to it. Me? I can't deny. Deny him? Deny him? What if somebody put a gun in your head, man? Uh, it was a few years back when a little girl, somebody put a gun in a little girl's head. She was like about eight, nine years old. She was caught in a some kind of terror situation, hostage situation. And a little eight-year-old girl, and they, and they was around there talking about, uh, she, they saw her praying, and she and they said, stop all that praying. And they said, deny Jesus, de deny God. And she said, I cannot. He pulled the trigger. Eight, eight years old. It's tough. It's tough. It sounds real heinous, but she said, I can't deny Jesus. 
Why do you think most of the apostles ended up dead? They try to get them to deny Jesus. Peter was hung upside down. He said, oh, no, you know, I never deny Jesus, but I also don't feel as if they're worthy enough to, to, to die the same way Jesus died. You got to crucify me upside down. They turned him upside down. Paul ended up getting his head chopped off. John the Baptist ended up getting his head chopped off. John the Apostle ended up getting his head chopped off. Deny Jesus? Can't do it. Won't do it. Uh, no, won't do it. Won't. I won't. Because after I leave this world, I know I'm going to come back with a better body. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. God, I know how to put my head back on my body and put it together. If he, if you, cre if you cremated yourself, I don't know why I'm going down this road. If you, can, if you say if you die, and uh, if, you, if you die, you let watch this right now. That's pretty cool because you're in heaven watching the way you watch them. <laughs> but if, if when you die and you decide to cremate yourself, you know, through your will or whatever, great. You think God will know how to go back and pick up each ash and put it back together? Glory to God. God is cool, man. So, with that being said, I'm not going to deny. Why? My leaders should be not denying him as well. And we got leaders out there every so often. I give honor and glory to God, but they cheating on their wife. I give honor and glory to God, who's my Savior and my Lord, but then they won't get married. Oh, they didn't make $50 million. They didn't gave to the poor. They went up, what country have you ever went to and then created a country and helped and help educate a country? Get married to your, get married to that man. I ain't getting married to him. I know, I just, that, 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 that involved too much of a commitment. You can be committed to business, but you can't be committed to a woman or man. Uh, we, our perspective of our leaders is way off. It's way off. Go, go over here. Go back over to Ephesians. Go to Ephesians. Ephesians. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 4. And we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, uh, my time is almost, I've got like six more minutes, six, seven more minutes. I mean, seven more minutes, that's when they clock. Look what it says, Ephesians chapter 4. It says, uh, verse 11, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. What? Why? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Now, we've already talked about people coming into this body. You came out of the world system. I came out of the world system. You came into the body of Christ still with that jacked up attitude. You came into the body of Christ still with those same old flaws and faults. See, Christians, some of us Christians who've been in the body for a long time, some of y'all need to get y'all act together because you got more and more new converts coming in who still addicted to homosexuality. I'm going to say it again. They still addicted to the cigarettes. They still addicted to cheating on their wife. They just got born again. They got the tattoos on their face. They got the tattoos all the way down their body. They might have a dragon with a bone skull bleeding off their shoulder all the way down the middle of their back. And they don't like wearing a shirt because they want to show off their tattoo. And some of you Christians need to help them and help get them delivered. They, they still might have the rough neck tattooed on their arm, but at least their heart's been changed and their mind and perception has been changed by the word and some of us Christians are stopping them from growing. So you see them. Why she wearing that? They just came out of the world. I don't know why y'all made me go down the road. I'm sorry. That was the old outreach. Oh, just come just in, man. Okay, no, no one. That's what you we needed. Why? For the perfecting of the saints. They are not a sinner anymore saved by grace. They saved by grace, which makes them a saint now. And it's up to us to teach it to them. That's what the apostle, prophet, and pastor does. They help edify them, help mature them in Christ. For the perfecting of the saints, what? For the work 
of the ministry. The day they get born again is the day, the very same day, God gives to them the ministry of reconciliation. They may not have the gift of a pastor, prophet, evangelist, teacher, but they might have the gift of a doctor. They might have the gift of a social worker. They might have the gift of a teacher. Their job is going to, they're going to go back out and they're going to help deliver somebody else and help get somebody else in Christ. Which that new person is going to now come in with a bad attitude, a broken heart, a man who left them, a man who beat on them. They, they, they've had divorce after divorce. So help edify them. They probably have had abortion after abortion. And who are we to pass judgment on them when Jesus paid for their sin? Now, you can judge the sin, and that's the part where a lot of Christians have missed it. Judge the sin, not the person. It's hard trying to do that because every time you think about somebody coming into adultery, that person jump over your head. Every time you think about a man killing a woman, you think about OJ. Don't, 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 don't play this game with me. Y'all know you do. You know you do. Every time I think of a burning bed situation, I think of Farrah Fawcett. She got, you know, she got tired of that man whooping all on. She said, I'm, I'm gone. I'm done. He got drunk, but put him, put him to sleep. I, I'm like, I don't want to end up like that. I don't want to do the Lorraine Bobby thing. Wake up in the morning. Ah! <laughs> Stuff hacked off because you cheat. <laughs> it's hard thinking about, not, it's hard, but you can do it though. Why? Because that person who comes in, they're now in the body of Christ. And we need to be their leaders. God, you, God needs to use you and let them see you walking in his glory, walking in his freedom, walking in his salvation. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. I told y'all last, last couple weeks, this person over here who was a racist bigot, he get into the body of Christ now. Now I'm over here, black as I want to be. <laughs> I need a bit to figure out how to get along with this guy now. Yeah. It can get that tough. In this earth, because he's going he to die, he's going to go to heaven. I'm going to die, and I'm going to go to heaven. There is no other section of heaven where there's not going to be nations or races of people where we're not going to walk into each other. We better find, figure out a way how to deal with it now and get over it now and let God help us be free now. Then we just read that over there? He says so that we can walk, so that others can walk in the, the salvation of Jesus Christ as well as the eternal glory that's now going to heaven and then being free while you're here now. <clears throat> How many of us right now still have not gotten over racism and bigotry? We still ain't figured it out. And some of our leaders are doing it. Some of us, we, we, cru we crucify Donald Trump. Crucify him. It's like every time he opens up his mouth, people get mad. <laughs> and and, and he, he is the only one over the last eight, nine years of presidents saying, hey, all you politicians, you're stealing all the money from the people yeah. because you want free health care. Yeah. Are you stealing all the money from the people who put you in office and here you are, you're trying to make sure your kids go to college. Well, what about their kids? You make an excess of four, five, six, seven million dollars a year. You trying to tell me you can't pay for your own health insurance? And Donald Trump busting their body and saying, he needs to become more political. Really? He tell the truth. And you're mad about it. Okay, why am I going down that road? I don't know. Maybe we need to hear. Somebody need to hear that. It said, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body. We are all in this body. Last verse. Till we all come in a unity of, well, that's two verses. Till we all come in a unity of the faith. And of the, and of the of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of the statutes of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried away, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie and wait to deceive. 
people are sitting up waiting to deceive us. And we say, well, they successful because they got a million dollars or they got $20 million. Oh, they successful because they got business after business after business after business. And look how many people they didn't put in jobs. We say that they successful because they, they created this massive art stock structure. But yet this person hooked on cocaine every day. They're not walking in freedom. So I heard somebody say that they, they asked Hugh Hefner. They asked Hugh Hefner a few years ago. They said, they said, now you look at you, you're so successful, blah, 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 blah. You got all this money, you got the penthouse. He said, are you, are you truly happy now? And he was like, what is happiness? So I'm gonna I'm, I'm, no, no, I'm just putting it out there. I'm not gonna get mad and you know, go for it, you go for it. You got six women all look alike and you engage all of them and you're not gonna get married nobody. Okay, well that's your choice. Go for it. I, me, I'm not gonna pattern my life after that. I can't do it. It, it costs too much. It costs way too much. Well, how you got flaws and faults too? Now thank God, God has delivered me from all of them. And he delivered me to Denise. <laughs> he delivered me to, to, to operate. You know, that old ivory, you can you uh, some of y'all out there you might all do some research on him. And you go back and you're gonna find some ugly stuff. But this ivory has wronged no man. Be like Paul. I ain't wrong no man. How can you say that? Paul said it. Paul crucified the church. And then when Paul got over there in the book of Corinthians, Paul says, I have wronged no man. Paul didn't do nothing. This new ivory in Christ Jesus, all that stuff is dead, buried, and gone. That ivory is dead. And if you see him again, you tell me about him so I can kill him. I'm kill him all. Because that spiritual thing right there, that old ivory was not of God. And God had to deliver him. Glory to God, man! Glory to God for this saving power of our leaders. God and God will develop, get, get leaders to you so that you can walk in. We'll be right back.